Hit Shift A to add a cylinder, then open the bottom left menu and type in three for the vertices. Press RX90, then tab for edit mode, then two for edge select mode. Select these three edges, select the bevel tool, pull the handle and simultaneously scroll up with your mouse. Maybe stretch it out a little bit. In object mode, right click and hit shade smooth. To make it not suck, make sure to enable auto smooth here on the right. If you have the latest version of Blender, you can just hit shade auto smooth and skip that step. Okay, now open up a shader editor, click new for a new material, drag and drop an image of the clock into the shader editor, then connect the color to the base color. Hey, if you can't see the texture, make sure to select either material preview or render preview. All right, time to put the texture on there properly. In order to do so, open a new window, make it a UV editor and open up the image that we've loaded in. Then click this button to switch to an orthographic projection. Now move around a little bit to try and imitate the camera angle from the image and select the thing, press tab to go into edit mode, A, U, project from view, bounce. Now open up an actual UV editor. Make sure to have all the faces in the 3D viewports in edit mode selected. Then also hit A in the UV editor to select everything there. Then G to move, R to rotate, S to scale, W to go through the different selection tools. With those very simple commands, you just slide stuff around, scale it up, scale it down, you know, all this kind of stuff until the UV map looks somewhat acceptable at least. All right, front looks good, back looks fucking terrible. So tap into edit mode, select all the back faces and hit project from view. And then in the UV editor, just move it to a place with no text. Do the same for this side face, because that is currently not looking good. Obviously it makes sense to just line it up with the other side. All right, looks good, but how can we make the letters on the clock emit some light? Very good question. Hit shift A in the shader editor and search for a color ramp. Put the color ramp in between the image color and the emission color input, and then just also plug the color again back into the base color, then clamp out some of the black values with the color ramp, turn up that emission strength, and we're pretty much done. But the cool thing is that we can now still edit that image externally. So in the UV editor, go image, edit externally. Take that image into your favorite photo editing software. For me, that's Affinity Photo. Then you can also download and install some kind of a digital clock font. And then you can just use this like AI content aware eraser tool whatever the f it's called, to get rid of all the letters from the original image and to replace those with really whatever text you want with this new font that you've downloaded. You basically have all the ultimate freedom that you want. So in this case, I actually want three images um, that are going to be animated so that you have this kind of loading bar type of vibe. So you have to export three images from your photo editing software, one with one, one with two, and one with three dots. If dragging and dropping isn't handy for you because maybe you only have one screen, then you can also just hit shift D on one of the image nodes and then just load up another image on the node itself. You plug them both into to a mix node and then just play with the fact and you can see what it does. Taking the third picture, add another mix node. Make sure to connect everything correctly and then we have these factor sliders that we can just play around with and animate using I to insert keyframes and boom, there's our loop. Now if you have a question with regards to why I'm putting a stream starting soon loading loop on an Amazon clock, um because I can. But the really fun part now actually begins when we start building a scene around our clock. I'm putting the clock on a windowsill inside of a room. I'm using curves to model a cable. I'm opening up a graph editor and then with the camera selected, I'm gonna hit I to insert a location keyframe at the first frame and then one at the last frame. And I want some handheld look for the camera. That's what I'm going for. Having set all the keyframes, we can now go to this drop down menu, select one of the parameters, then hit N for the side panel, then go to modifiers and go add modifier noise. By default, it's way too high. So set the strength down to something like 0.001 and then also get the scale up to something like, well, some value in between five and 20, I guess it's usually fine. Now do the same for the other parameters. Download some PBR textures for the window and also for the window sill. Enable the node wrangler add-on. Select your principal BSDF and hit shift control T. Open all your textures and the node wrangler plugged all the textures into their recording inputs for the principal BSDF. Maybe unwrap the window sill again with a cube projection. Then for the window glass, make sure to use this node setup and go on the internet and search for some kind of a dirty window texture. It doesn't actually have to be a transparent on PNG. But whatever, I'm stupid. Select all the uh, glass faces, hit U, unwrap, and then I'm just going to plug in this image into the color of the refraction BSDF, and look at that, looks like an actual dirty window. With a mixed RGB note, we can add some more controls, so we can plug that into the color one, and then make the color too white, and then with the factor, we can, as you can see, be very exact with uh, how much dirtiness we want on the window. I'm duplicating the mixed RGB, hitting shift D, and then I'm going to plug it into the color one, make the color too black, and then we can put that into the roughness, and then with the factor slider, we can also dial in some of the roughness. Last but not least, we can also just take that color and plug it into the transparent BSDF color. Also adds a little something. Nice. Everything looks good except for the background. Let's add some houses. Just go on various websites like Sketchfab or TurboSquid to download various house models. By the way, websites for good PBR textures and 3D models will be linked in the description. Now is also the time to turn on some good music because now we want to make sure that we get the right feeling for our scene. Yeah, so in other words, just take those houses and place them in your scene and just move them around and look at it from the camera view. I'm making an evening scene so I want 
want some of the windows to uh, emit some light. For this, I'm hitting K for the knife tool, tracing out the windows, and I'm going to assign those faces in edit mode while they are selected to the new material that I'm creating. I'm going to assign the same material with the same technique to these windows over here as well, and looks good. If at some point you get this weird like clipping problem, then go and select the camera, go to the right here, and then just turn up the clip end so that it doesn't clip anymore. I'm going to use this image to create a house for the background. I'm going to drag and drop that image into the shader editor for the material for this cuboid. For the UV map, I'm going to hit AU project from view. And then in the UV editor, I'm just going to align the vertices very, very roughly and very quickly. Looks pretty wonky, but since we're putting it into the background, it totally does the trick. I'm repeating the same process with another cuboid and another image. Also tracing out some windows on this one. Also with the knife tool, you always have to hit enter after you've traced out something. In case you're wondering why the knife tool doesn't work for you. If you want to, we can even trace out the window sills and just extrude them a little bit. Might add a little extra something to the scene. And look at that. Actually looks pretty good right now, I would say. But there's one more really cool thing that I really want to show you guys. I'm just going to move this part of the window up because I want these faces here to emit some light and I've got something prepared for that. So I'm going to select the faces, then hit U, unwrap. And I want this video to be like visible in the window. So I'm going to hit Shift A, image texture, load up the video. Only connecting the color to the emission color looks pretty bad. So instead use this node setup. And once we've done that, I can finally say thanks for watching.